if you want to start something, you can do it right now and today. If you don't need permission from someone to give your bank account and plug into the fiat system. Just as you say, like, we have no idea. We're the first one to figure this out. So we're also still experimenting. We first started with the idea we want to make premium content, like more in depth, and then it should not be like hidden and covered by all like the quick daily news. We have both people paying the membership with Lightning and the paywall with Lightning. So there are two different income streams, which all come together in like one wallet. So you see every day as a company, we're doing DCA basically. We provide some value, we write cool stuff. People pay for it and every day you see like a little bit of sets just getting into your wallet. People like it that they don't have to leave their email and personal information to read some articles. Just like you're going to a kiosk, you give like a penny, you get a newspaper and you walk, walk away. Like no one has to know who you are. Welcome to the second episode of Stacking Sats. As I mentioned in the last episode, this is a brand new series focused on highlighting the stories of the people using Bitcoin apps to stack sats. Now, I'm still considering whether or not I want this to be part of my main show or part of a separate show altogether. So your feedback on this is much appreciated. Today's episode features Arnold Hubach, a Bitcoin writer who has stacked over 3 million sats on his Dutch website called Bitcoin Focus using Albi's WordPress plugin. Before we get into the episode, just a quick note. Today's show is sponsored by Voltage. Voltage is the premier provider of Bitcoin and Lightning node infrastructure. Today's show is also sponsored by Stackwork. Stackwork is a lightning powered transcription tool that takes the best of AI and humans to create better, faster, less expensive transcripts. You can learn more about Voltage and Stackwork by clicking links in the show notes. Arnold, welcome to the show. And uh, thank you for taking the time to chat about how you are stacking sats. Before we get into the episode, can you give listeners a brief backstory of yourself? Share a bit about your life prior to Bitcoin. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, and my life prior to Bitcoin is before the 2016, 2017 hype. I studied product design, wanted to be an inventor, an engineer. And um, while doing that, I heard obviously about Bitcoin, but also all the altcoins around. And I started reading more about it and eventually writing um, became my hobby to dive into the rabbit hole and explain everything in Dutch. I'm from the Netherlands. And um, as I was graduating as a product designer, I uh, moved to Cambodia for half a year to continue my study there, which meant that I had to give up my side job, my fiat side job. And I could continue doing remote work, which is reading and writing about Bitcoin and, and writing articles. And back then more like blockchain. And as I graduated, I decided to go all in or basically full time into Bitcoin stuff. So I didn't become an engineer and a product designer for a single second. I continued writing uh, for BitcoinMagazine.nl, which is not affiliated to B2C Media. And from there, the whole journey started as a full-time writer. And then, so talk to me about, talk to me about Bitcoin Focus. This is, this is your uh, website right now where you're doing a lot of writing, uh, again, in Dutch, uh, for primarily for the Netherlands, uh, audience looking to understand Bitcoin. Um, why did you decide to set this up as a website? Why did you decide then you were also going to charge in sats, uh, versus some of the other business models you could have pursued? Yeah, so as I graduated, I continued writing for BitcoinMagazine.nl together with two colleagues, uh, Robin and Wessel. And it's the, I think, the biggest news medium for Dutch Bitcoin content, which is like purely based on advertisement, press releases, uh, and those kind of uh, revenue models. And as I start continued writing for them, um, I went, for example, to El Salvador to make a documentary about Bitcoin Day. And that's the moment where it was like, if we have this mo this website with a lot of news where you have like, let's say technical analysis as well, and the different kind of content, which is like a big production with a documentary, we want to have like 
a different platform for this more in-depth content. So not just the quick news, like what's happening today and, and yesterday, but more like a bigger overview, in-depth articles. So then we decided to uh, found Bitcoin Focus with the three of us and not do this model based on advertisement, but like pure on value for value, uh, whatever you call it, pay, the Lightning paywall uh, memberships. So like the people pay for what they read instead of like the, the companies. And currently there are like those two different models where uh, Bitcoin Magazine, I'm freelancing there and I'm the co-founder of Bitcoin Focus, which is like stacking sets on a daily basis, just little bits. And so, so how did you decide though, the, the idea of setting up either a paywall or value for value, these are slightly different approaches to the same kind of idea of like stacking sats. What was your thought process on which one you should pursue? Yeah, that's a good question. So we first started with the idea we want to make premium content, like more in depth, and then it should not be like hidden and covered by all like the quick daily news. And with that as a starting point, we were thinking about making a, a newsletter on a different platform, a new website. And then we started looking like, how can we implement cool lightning stuff on it? And then um, I found, yeah, I found a, an LB plugin for WordPress websites. So we started playing with it, integrating to see how it worked. And yeah, it kind of worked. And and the whole thing about Bitcoin Focus is that we have it's premium content. So it's for memberships. People pay like a monthly subscription fee and they can read like all three articles a week uh, sent to their email. And one of them is like free for everyone. It's like open on the Friday edition. So we have been thinking about value for value as well. Um, but I don't know. We chose for, for the paywall because like it's so new that I think we're the first European official media publication that's doing paywall stuff. So it's really cool to experiment, but why we chose paywall, I don't remember actually. I, I know we've been debating like, what shall we do? Uh, I think because we already have a platform where everything is open based on ads. So then you want to have something more closed based on something else. And value for value is also more open. Right, that makes sense. Now, I believe I have this correct, but correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's right now, I believe it's, a one euro for viewing the full article on, on the website and I believe 15 for a monthly membership. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. How did you come up with that pricing strategy? Cause this is something that I'm trying to figure out. I think a lot of lightning creators are trying to figure out how do you price your products? If you're going to set up a paywall, what is that? Is it should be, you know, should it be priced in sats denominated in sats? Should it be denominated in a fiat currency? what amount is the right amount? Like, how did you kind of go through that process and come out on the other side with a one euro and 15 euro uh, monthly subscription plan? Yeah, so good question. Um, so first of all, within the LB plugin that we use and we have tweaked a bit, we have both the option indeed to charge in fiat, like euros or USD, whatever, and in Bitcoin. So like, it's both possible. It's not like it's a technical, uh, reason why we chose to charge a euro. Um, I think we started looking back at like what does already exist in the market and what's like reasonable for memberships and the 15 euro a month was, um, I think reasonable compared to what's out there and, and what people are willing to pay. And then we actually started to charge $1, one euro 95 for an article. And it went quite well for many months, but just as you say, like, we have no idea. We're the first one to figure this out. So we're also still experimenting. So I think two months ago, we changed the price to one euro for an article or 99 cents or something to just see how it's going. Because like, if we can see a behavior in like the amount of paid, uh, lightning articles, like we can do something with it. So we're still in the process of like figuring out what works and trial and error. And so currently it's one euro, um, we don't do it long enough now to really see if it's making a difference. Um, like you may be selling twice the amount of articles for the same price. It's something that we're like have to analyze, but it's not like it's all still experimenting. It's not set in stone. Like we're early. <laughs> right. That makes sense. So when you think about the future experiments you plan to run, what what's on your mind? Like, what are you thinking about when 
trying to take this to the next level, trying to like elevate the Bitcoin focus to like a whole new level, um, you know, to the point where, you know, maybe this becomes a full-time thing for you. Like how, how do you get from where you are today to the level you want to achieve? So I think the first important thing is to continue creating awesome content that people want to read because like, that's the only way to succeed like have a good pricing and make something unique that's not there yet. So you have to be very creative and like push yourself for better content. Um, so for example, I was um, in Boracay last year, December, uh, Bitcoin Island. It's created by Lightning Wallet Pouch. And I made a, a documentary there as well, um, just to see how it's going. Um, and like the documentary is open and then the series of articles about it is premium, like five articles about like interviews with merchants, with the, the the Lightning Wallet developers, my personal experiences. So like to have this combination of like one really cool half an hour documentary. And if people want to see all the answers, like questions answered, they can go to the articles. So we've been trying to do that as well in combination with a value for value QR code in the documentary. So people can send sets like directly to this free and open uh, content. Um, so that's what we've been trying out last month, but yeah, there, there are more possibilities as well, where you can like, we've, we've not really been thinking about actively doing this, but it's possible to have set a kind of threshold. Like if we reach $15 for an article, it's open or 50 or 100. And then we, we raise the amount that we think it's worth it. And then it's open for everyone. Um, it's a bit like the. The podcast from John Carvalho. Oh yeah. So everyone can kind of crowdfund. Everyone can kind of like pitch in. Yeah. Ah, that's really cool. So it's possible. We haven't really been playing with that yet because like we're just figuring that out as well. And like you don't want to change your brand and your business model too many times because then it's like not clear what you're actually offering people. But I mean like there are more many more things possible that that other people can also try out. <laughs> now, when you're thinking about, you mentioned a documentary, you are, you do a lot of written content on Bitcoin focus. Do you think at all about the types of the different formats for content that, that do well in terms of like, you know, stacking sats? Like, do, do you think that video content, audio content, written content, long form, short form, do you, uh, do you move in a, a direction that you think will stack you more sats or do you, do you send, tend to like stay true to, we're just going to try and create the best content. And if we're writers, we're writers, we're going to leave it at that. Um, how do you think about the formats of content that you create, uh, for Bitcoin focus? Yeah. So that's interesting. So like on the website, it's based on ads. You look at the clicks because like, that's what eventually is going to pay back for you. And right now with Bitcoin Focus, we can really see which articles are being bought by the readers and which topics people find interesting. So currently with Bitcoin Focus, we have once a week lightning focus. So it's like fully dedicated to lightning. We just published one today and we see that people like that uh, and not based on clicks, but just like the interest, like you can really see the value that people see for it. And the same is like we have once or like twice a month, an update about on-chain analytics. It's like totally different and you can see like on article level what people like and what they don't like and so we have the same with interviews more like the i'm a digital nomad so i'm traveling all over the world to bitcoin places and telling my experiences so you can have very specifically analyzed what type of content you're making what people like and not um beyond just a click which is all about the thumbnail and the title mm -hmm. do you see a difference then in the like if you look at the most popular clicked articles and the most popular paid articles, like, cause, cause you show a, a good chunk of the article for everyone. They can see a certain amount of the article and then they have to pay to see the, the full article. Is there a big difference in the number of uh, the, the most popular clicked articles and the most popular paid articles? Or is that pretty consistent that if, if an article is getting a lot of clicks, it tends to get paid a lot. Um, yeah, that's very hard to say because we have on every Friday, we send out a free and open, we call it a preview edition to 5,000 emails. Um, it's just an open mailing list and 
that one is like obviously open more because people go to the website just because they can they know the friday edition is for free um and we send it like out as a free article as well so people maybe tend to click on it more um so i don't know if that's like if there's really something to say about these things like the click ratio compared to the paywall ratio or something like i don't know that's fair okay i want to get into the tools and apps that you're using today so if someone listening to this is considering becoming a creator, whether it's Bitcoin content or any other content, what are the tools that you're using today? What does your tech stack look like in building Bitcoin focus so you can stack sats? Yeah, right. I, I guess then we have to start at the very beginning uh, because we founded Bitcoin focus as a new entity, a new company, new venture. We needed a bank account which first of all took us three four months to really get one because it's like bitcoin focus uh citadel media is the is the name of the of the the company so we were i think declined twice or three times before we really got access to a bank account so we can start like stacking fias or whatever in the same time we set up the wordpress put on the plug the play the paywall plugin and in the same day we could receive sets already from readers so we could not integrate our fiat monthly subscriptions with credit card or uh, ideal it's a dutch payment method but at the same like that took very long before we could start earning fiat but we could start earning sets like on the same day as we wanted to launch our website so i think that's a funny thing to mention first of all <laughs> so like if you want to start something you can do it right now and today like you don't need permission from someone to give your bank account and plug into the fiat system and then secondly, um, we have been in touch with uh, a Dutch lightning geek wizard. We call him the wizard in the early days, lightning checkout. And he helped us with the whole lightning backend on the website. So both if people want to pay their membership with lightning, but so also the paywall and the pay-per-view, we use the, the LB plugin. Um, I think it's WordPress lightning publisher or something which was pre-alpha when we got in touch with uh, Michael uh, and um, Moritz. They were working on that. And since then, it's been developing uh, this plugin. So I think we started almost a year ago with putting this all together, WordPress and mailing software and the paywall. And since then, the plugin has been updated. I think we're the only one that's really using it like for a serious publication besides like playing with lightning and, and and written content so um i think it's pretty easy like you go to the to the plugin part in wordpress and you can install it put in your lightning address and you there you're good to go yeah now you mentioned enabling lightning for subscriptions H how does that all work not perfect because like there is no recurring payments possible in lightning yet so we have this lightning checkout software connected to our uh, WooCommerce environment. So every that's like all automatic. So if someone renews or receive an email, if they um, don't pay or like when they have to renew it, it's expired or something. So with fiat payments, a credit card, it's gonna be renewed automatically every month. But on lightning, that's impossible. So right now what it does, it's just sending an email and saying like click here so you can manually renew your membership with your lightning wallet so there's definitely a lot to be done still on this like uh client level for lightning to make it better than 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 fiat because for us how ironically like it actually is sometimes it's better when people pay with credit card on their first membership because we know it's going to be renewed until they cancel mm, i see rather than manually having to pay every month on lightning it's a little bit uh, more friction for the user okay so so your tech stack here then make i just want to make sure i have this correct it's wordpress for hosting the content woocommerce is the kind of plugin where you can like keep track of who your users are and then lightning payments provided by the albi WordPress plugin, and those kind of all connect to one another to make sure that to the user, it's a pretty seamless experience on the website. 
Yeah, exactly. And then there's one thing to add, because if you put, uh, let's say, WooCommerce and Lightning paywall together, if people have an active membership, you don't want them to see the paywall, right? So if you just put them individually, people still see the paywall if they already have an active membership. So we had to tweak both of the, the software a little bit. So it's compatible. So when people don't have an active membership, they see the paywall. If they already have one, they don't see the paywall. So we use Lightning Checkout, a Dutch company for he helped us uh, to, to build that. Um, but if you're only planning to only do paywall, so no memberships besides that, yeah, then you're like the LB plugin, Wook, uh, you don't need WooCommerce, just WordPress and the plugin, that's it. Got it. Are there any other tools that you're considering using? You know, the lightning landscape's evolving incredibly fast. There's a lot of new ways in which people can now earn money for creating content. Any other tools that you're looking at and, and considering integrating either into Bitcoin Focus or some other venture? Um, well, so first of all, we have this open free additional Friday in which we include the donation link. So which becomes value for value. Um, and that's just a simple, I think LM bits, LN URL pay, if I'm not mistaken, QR code, so people click on it, they can send. So that's pretty easy. It's, I wouldn't even call it like really a tool <laughs> because it's already so accessible. Um, I know like we are, we don't have plans to experiment more with lightning because I think we're already experimenting a lot by doing this, but I know like there is this idea from the carrot, the Bitcoin magazine.com app where readers earn sets by reading. Um, that's something that can be explored. Like we're not actively doing this. We first prefer to have this lightning paywall even like the user experience better because the button is gray and boring. Like we need to improve that. But besides that, indeed, like paying readers hypothetically could be something. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. I mean, like we are recording this right now on Vita. We're streaming live and anyone tuning in live is actually earning sats as well. They're getting streamed sats for just participating. Um, so, and, and we've seen this already fountain does something similar for, they have a listen to earn product. So we're definitely seeing, uh, applications of users earning sats for participating. And I think this, it does make sense because you look around at the, the social media landscape and the users are the ones that are creating value for all these giant tech platforms. Right. And so now all the lightning companies are saying, why don't we pay the users, show them, you know, that they're actually worth something because no one on Facebook has ever earned a penny for their time. You know, they've spent a decade uploading all their personal life history and photos and data and have never earned a penny. And now all the lightning companies can go, come in and go, Hey, look, your, your time and your effort and your, your attention is worth something. And it could be an interesting strategy to grow Bitcoin focus. If you integrate that, I, I think, I think you're on something there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's chat about earnings. Now let's talk numbers. Um, can you give people a rough estimate of like what you guys are earning in sats from, from, uh, you know, people tuning in and, uh, reading your content. Right. So yeah, we have both people paying the membership with lightning and the paywall with lightning. So there are two different income streams, which all come together in like one wallet. And I think in total we earned between I think three and five million sets now um, by all the little bits that people are reading like every day. So I think um, this money is like sent to Wallet of Satoshi because we need a lightning address for it and we didn't set up it ourselves. But the nice thing is that every time when it's being paid out, we receive this little notification on our iPhone or a smartphone, like $1, $2. So you see every day as a company, we're doing DCA. Basically we provide some value. We write cool stuff. People pay for it. And every day you see like a little bit of sets just getting into your wallet. And I was just aware of that. Like some, some weeks ago, I was like, yeah, this is dollar cost averaging as a company. You're just stacking a little bit of sets every day as people read and pay for it. That's very cool. And now. You know, I, I did a, the first episode of this series I did with, uh, with Joe Martin, he's a musician. And when we were talking, he said that 
he earned, I think, uh, about three pounds, uh, three British pounds in um, in ad revenue from Spotify, YouTube, all the kind of traditional streaming platforms. And he had earned about a hundred pounds in sats on Lightning. So I'm thinking about about your instance now. I'm thinking, what would you be earning if you had banner ads from Google? Like, I, I imagine it would be a, a tiny fraction of the you know millions of sats that you've accumulated from people actually paying, right? Because like, I don't know what banner rates are. Have you have you done that calculation or thought about like what the alternate universe would have been like for Bitcoin focus if you if you had just you know put on Google banner ads or something? Yeah, so that's what uh, my two colleagues are doing at BitcoinMagazine.nl, where I'm also writing. But I don't have these numbers. Um, I'm not like that's not my part there. I'm just writing. I'm not the co-founder. Um, but the only thing I know, like, it can either be Google ads, but you can also do like the ads for Bitcoin or Lightning companies that just want some exposure. Um, so I think it's very hard to compare. Also because Bitcoin Focus just got started recently. It's maybe a niche without a, within a niche without a niche, like crypto and then Bitcoin and then Lightning payments. Uh, so you can't compare it, I think, to websites where people can read about price. And that's what most peop- more people are interested in. Um, and that's where the clicks usually come from. So I think it's very hard to compare at this stage uh, how these two models, like where they collide and where one is better or the other. Fair enough. Now... In, in the process of setting this up and being a pioneer in experimenting with Lightning payments, uh, what are the big challenges that you've seen in either getting them to work correctly or getting users to contribute and maybe tweaks that you've made in, in the experimentation process or anything that surprised you in the process? Because you're, you're on the frontier right now putting in Lightning payments into your product. Uh, anything that you've learned that uh, might be useful to others? Yeah, we, we have had quite some feedback regarding that. For example, that people like it, that they don't have to leave their email and personal information to read some articles. Just like you're going to a kiosk, you give like a penny, you get a newspaper and you walk, walk away. Like no one has to know who you are. You just quickly want to read something. Uh, so that's what uh, readers like. That's what I've heard uh, from them. Some other good feedback was more practical, um, for example, that we only had a QR code initially. Um, so if you open it on your phone, you click, I want to read more, you see the QR code. If you click on it, it opens a wallet, but it's the wallet for on iOS, you cannot really choose which wallet you want to open. So we had, and it opened a wallet that was empty for a reader. So we had to add like the lightning string as well. So you can copy it and paste it in any wallet you want. And in our own flow, like it always opens your preferred wallet. You have some SaaS, it works. But if the people, the person that's reading it doesn't have like money in the wallet that's automatically opened, it's not going to work. And all these little things that you just figure out as people send feedback and it's like, oh yeah, of course we need to add a copy button and, and things like that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so now if, if you were to start all over again from scratch, Having you know, know, knowing what you know now about Lightning payments and how it all works, what would you be doing differently? Um, I think, well, maybe not differently, but we started like at the beginning of the beer market a year ago, so it's definitely much easier to start when there's more hype, when when you want to reach more people. On the other hand, beer markets are for building, and we've been doing that, and we've been optimizing the website and all the the Lightning stuff since a year ago, so. I don't know. It's maybe something to consider. I don't know if I would have done it differently. Um, I remember back then we were also, we wanted to build something really cool before launching it. And maybe it's just better to put it online, write stuff and just some proof of work and people will come. It doesn't have to be perfect on the first go. You can always change your, your, um, value proposition later a bit. Like it doesn't have to have everything when you start. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think that, uh, I, I don't know. Are there any particular kinds of creators that you think, man, they should just, they should be on lightning right away. Like why are, why are they not on lightning yet? Cause you know, you've experienced this in the context of writing. There's all sorts of kinds of creators that could be making use of lightning payments today. Um, is there a particular type of creator 
or you know a particular set of people that you'd like to see adopt lightning payments yeah i think it's kind of a paradox because we are writing for bitcoiners that are like already more in depth into bitcoin so they have a lightning wallet so they know how to use it and still of our readers we did a survey i think 40 or 50 percent never did a lightning payment before but like they read about lightning and bitcoin like on a daily basis so if i'm then thinking about other groups of people that are content creators make sure your audience knows how to use a lightning wallet and it's easy for us but if you're new to it how do you get bitcoin on your lightning wallet for example like do you send it from binance to an on-chain address and then you can start spending lightning like all these kind of things are very normal for us but like getting your money on your wallet i think for the normies that's not like one two three let's go <laughs> so um i think eventually it's for every creator this kind of model makes so much sense but like there's another side as well which is the audience that needs to pay right i wonder if if maybe gaming is a great you know gateway for like if, if someone were to create a imagine like a bitcoin focus for gaming gaming focus you know talking about all the all the new games out uh, a premium newsletter or, or website, whatever you want to call it, focused on gaming. There's, I know for a fact, there are a ton of people on Zebedee, Thunder Games, Fum Games, like all sorts of mobile lightning gaming platforms. They're doing a ton of, you know, there's a ton of users. They're doing, they're all, you know, relatively small transactions, of course, like hyper casual mobile games. It's not like you're earning a hundred bucks every time you play. It's, you know, small amounts, but I think everyone's pretty familiar now with lightning payments. I think they're, they're all familiar with moving their funds through Thunder Games or Zebedee or whatever platform they're using. And then it's like, okay, now they know that they have that skill set. They can then go ahead and pay for something that they actually want to see in the world. And maybe there's, who knows, maybe there's an opportunity there, but that's a great point about, you know, making sure the audience also understands how to use the technology that you're using. Yeah, actually you're hitting a good point here. Uh, my sister, uh, my little sisters, I set up a lightning wallet for her so she can earn Bitcoin using Thunder Games. And even although it was like two cents that she had, like after a week of having fun, it became like three cents or something. Or like she saw the the, the 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 amount changing. Maybe it went from forty cents to forty one, like just two three percent. And this is like, hey, wait, it's like changing in value. Like if I can put in a bit more, and then it's gonna increase as well. And wait, I have some money in it, so I can buy something online with the money I earned playing games. And then it's when it starts to to click for her. Like she starts to understand it. And that should not come with this hard sound money story and like privacy and whatever, like just a play and fun way to earn it. And then once they can start spending it somewhere, that's when the circle is like made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've heard people describe it as like a Trojan horse for Bitcoin adoption through games where you just like, you're kind of like sneaking Bitcoin into the game. Next thing you know, the person realizes they have a balance and then they study, okay, what is this Bitcoin thing? And they're off to the races. And then eventually they can come to Bitcoin focus or gaming focus and start to spend it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's a, the chicken egg problem. Like do you start with earning it or start with spending it? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time today. This is, this is awesome. It, I, I love hearing your story and, you know, getting people interested in stacking stats, I think is a key to Bitcoin adoption. And so I'm happy we could have you on here today to discuss everything you're doing at Bitcoin focus. Uh, before you go, though, where can listeners find you? Yeah, so if you're a Dutch, uh, obviously you should go to bitconfocus.nl. Um, I think we have a special promo code as well, which is Welcome by Focus. It's Dutch, Welcome by Focus. So you can try out uh, the, the membership uh, premium if you want. Me personally, I'm on Twitter uh, at Starnold, S T Arnold. But I prefer to be more on Noster these days. Um, but I cannot tell you my end button. And I think we have to work more on the, some nips to make this searchable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not really an easy thing to, to remember or to say. <laughs> exactly. I think it's uh, starnold at bitcoinfocus.nl. That's my nip 05. 
Um, so you can, uh, you can find it there. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking the time uh, and keep on stacking sats. Yeah. Thanks for having me.